Hey pronouncers, welcome back. Bruce from Intavo here. Very excited to be at PMI Tape with the owners, Mark and Andrew James, which I always have to like pause because James always throws me off as yeah, the last Yeah, two first name. names. Yeah, yeah, yeah. 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 Get that yeah. a lot. But we're super excited here. We are in where, Indiana? Noblesville, Indiana, just northeast of Indianapolis. Okay, Noblesville, Indiana. How far from Indianapolis, like an hour less? Half hour. Half hour, yeah. so yeah. not very far. Awesome manufacturing facility, big screen tape manufacturer. We're just gonna check it out. It's all made here. Yeah, welcome, welcome. Yeah, welcome, excited, welcome. Yeah, welcome, excited to show you. Bit of a lobby. Do people come in here actually, or is the majority of everything shipped? Majority of everything shipped. Uh, we really don't oh, get any. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, we really don't get any walk-in business or anything. Um, since we're working with screen printers, uh, I mean, there's a few local around here, but we sell through distributors, so we really don't get much walk-in business. Got it. Yeah. And maybe a quick history. We just did a podcast, which we'll link down below of PMI tape, which was awesome. Thanks for, for spending the yeah, time. Yeah, no, here. thank you. Yeah. The two minute version, how it got started and uh, getting from there to here. Yeah, yeah for sure, for it. sure. Yeah, um, you know, my wife and I started the company in 1990. Uh, we rented some space just around the corner here in the same, uh, same office complex. And uh, I started it as an industrial supply company specializing in tapes. So yeah. why why this in 1990? Well, you were know, you in the space before somehow? Or? Well, I did. I was a sales rep for another company selling specialty tapes. Uh -huh. And as a kid, I always wanted to have my own business. I mean, it's kind of a lifelong dream. Yeah. And so um, so we started it up and it was, uh, you know, we were very, very fortunate to have the, the good customers and the, and the good employees and vendors. And it's all about the relationships for us. Got so, it. So we enjoy it. but. But anyways, but, but so we started in 1990. Um, shortly after that, one of our good customers was a large screen print facility, and they're um, still in business here in Indy, and and they had a problem with their screen tapes, uh -huh. and so we developed the split tape just for them. We spent about a year trial and erroring all sorts of different adhesives, different processes, different things to to create what we have right now is the split tape. Got it. Yeah. So. And if you don't know about split tape and are running a shop, um, that's also in the podcast where we talk about, which Steven didn't realize as well. And then until he got it and realized how much more efficient it could be. Oh, in cool. Time yeah, yeah. So. that's cool. It, it, it's amazing at the shows how many people come up to us that are that are new to the split tape. Yeah. That that say they're they're amazed at the impact that something so simple has on yeah. their shop. You know, something just as simple as this tape has just an enormous impact on their productivity and their efficiencies. Cool. Which is cool. You know, it's, it's yeah. those kind of things that make it all worthwhile. Yeah. Awesome. So, yeah. And what's the square footage of this building now? Uh, we've got 11,000 square feet. Okay. Yep. Yeah. Yeah. Busting yeah. at the seams yet or no? I guess oh, we're yeah, we are busting. Are busting. Yeah. yeah, we have yeah. more than 11,000 square feet rented out at a warehouse in Indianapolis. So uh, what's here is kind of in process materials. And what's at the warehouse in Indianapolis is uh, raw stock and some finished goods yeah. and more just some safety stock. Got it. Yeah. yeah. Cool. All right, yeah. let's take a look. Yeah, yeah. Sure. Yeah. Yeah. Sure. Here yeah. you go. So first off, we've got our slushy machine. Yeah. Oh, good idea. Yeah. Uh, in the summer, we realized that we could put Gatorade in it and the guys love it. So this is yellow Gatorade. Used to be Kool-Aid, but that's just a little heavy, so we switched over to Gatorade, and yeah. yeah. And that's truckers cool will uh, hear about it, they'll talk over the radio, and even if they're not picking up, they'll swing by, get a slushy, and go on their way. So yeah. it draws a little crowd. Yeah, they're always good. They're always good. Nice. Yeah. So we'll kind of start from the beginning of the process to the end, and uh, it's all laid out so we can kind of walk through that whole process. Cool. Yeah. I'm just like looking all the way over oh, there, yeah. which I, I yeah, don't want to spoil it, but there are robot arms <laughs> doing things. All right, sorry, I don't want to spoil it. No, it just yeah, caught my no, eye. Grab yeah, any cool. footage you need. Yeah. Yeah. So like I say, these are all in process materials. So stuff that we're about to use coming up, um, everything else is stored away at the warehouse. 
And all the brown boxes, they're paper cores that are on the inside of the tape. Um, so like all stored back here. So we've got pallets of just the cores ready to go. Interesting. So you purchase these already? We do, yep. yep. So we have those printed and we buy them and uh, pre-cut the different widths of tape. And this is all of boxes of Yeah, these, these are I mean, all just you cores. You see, yeah. you know, yeah. Yeah. must go down 30 feet or so of tubes. How many boxes would you say you run through a day? Uh, or tubes rather, maybe. We will go through uh, three or four pallets a day of these. Boxes. Oh, really? Yeah. All right. So, yeah, you know, four pallets. Yeah. Wow. Yeah. Holy cow, all right. So you, yeah, yeah, making quite a bit then. <laughs> so this is where it all starts. This is where we mix the adhesive. So programmed in here are the recipes for all of our different adhesives. Today we're running the clear quick rip stock. So we're mixing that clearish yellow adhesive, coating that on the coater and running that product today. But with our white split tape, it's a very similar construction, except it's a white adhesive, uh, different components go into the adhesive and everything but the recipe is all stored in here and it's all automated so right now we're running adh 260 which is for the 260 quick rip tape interesting and so yeah. you have to program the formulas essentially yeah that get loaded into this machine yep. which then, then spit control out the, the mixer and automatically load the right amount of each component got it which we'll see in a second of yep. how that all spits that out works. wow yeah. So this in here stores the secret recipes for all of our different adhesives, and it automatically combines in the right components, and we get the finished product. Yeah. Is this thing guarded like a lockbox or something? <laughs> yeah. Or, oh yeah. It's got all the secrets. It's like our the KFC secret yeah, 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 blend yeah, yeah, of spices. Yeah. 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 We can't put yeah. the same plane together. Yeah. yeah. Okay. Yeah. <laughs> And uh, a little thing from the Print Hustlers conference, we've got QR codes all over the place. Oh, uh, so well, what's, yeah, how does this work? The, on every machine, there's a daily shutdown checklist, uh, weekly cleaning, monthly cleaning, a six month cleaning, maintenance. So at the end of the day, whoever's running this machine will scan the QR code and then they go through that shutdown checklist. And that kind of keeps the place clean, keeps everyone accountable. And so, this goes to a video or is it a checklist you have to physically check off? It's a form. Uh, so it's a checklist that you physically check off oh. and then you initial when you're done. So, so it's more than training. It's the actual yep. process. Exactly. And then for videos, we've got QR codes that are right there. Very cool. Yeah. So and they're all is over it like place. a Google form you use or a job form? Yeah, exactly. It's a Zoho form is the brand, but it's the same thing as like a Google form. So what triggered you to want to put that in? Obviously you saw the two second lean talk, which was yeah. really cool, but like, was it coming up that people didn't know uh, where to find the forms or how did that, you know, what prompted it? We really didn't have the forms to start with and we really wanted a good way to consistently clean and do the same thing every day. And we found ourselves at the end of each day, like, oh, so-and-so didn't take out their trash. They didn't clean this. And we were always having to manually every day, then, you know, next morning, hey, you gotta remember to do this. And since we've put in this checklist system, at the end of every day, people have their checklists and then they have to initial when they're done. And that really keeps accountability. And it kind of automates the, the process of cleaning every day. Do you think it's helped a little bit, a lot? It's a lot. Middle? Oh wow, yeah, really? It, yeah. It, it provides accountability. Oh, right here, give me. Yeah, yeah. It, it provides accountability that the guys, everyone wants to do what what they're supposed to be doing. Yeah. You know, and and so with this, it, you know, hey, I need to do these twelve things today, Got and it. I'm signing it saying I did it. You know, and and that seems to have a much much bigger impact than just a a checklist stuck on the wall. Yeah. You know, where sometimes they do, sometimes they don't. With that signature. Um, the guys do it and they're proud to and, and everybody knows that each guy has his thing sure. and and so there's no question as to who's supposed to do what and do they scan it with their phone or they scan it with an yeah. ipad yeah, here? yeah with their phone oh, got yeah it. and they submit it yeah because i've seen some shop owners say if i push people to use their phone more i'm worried that people are on their phone more 
versus working? Is that a problem or no? You know, it hasn't been. Um, you know, as you'll see, our guys are all hardworking guys and there's really not an opportunity to just hang out on their phone. You know what I mean? Everybody's doing their thing. Each guy knows what they have to do and, and they and they embrace that and they do it. It's, it's a, it's, we're, we're really fortunate. The work culture that, that Andrew's created is, is and that the guys have embraced has been has been really good. We've got good mojo here right now. You know, that comes and goes sometimes. Yeah. You know, you get employees that you got to get rid of that, that bring that down. But, but we've got a great team and, and the guys all enjoy enjoy what they do and, and are proud of it. That's awesome. Cool. Yeah. Cool. Yeah. That's but, really cool to see the, the yeah. implementation of it. Yeah, yeah, exactly. They're all over the place. We have plenty yeah. of this. Uh, yeah. Yeah. Sweet. Yeah. So this What's is. What's in these uh, barrel drums here? Uh, is that. This is a, a base component of adhesive that's going to get loaded into the mixer. And uh, like, here's a partial drum. So that's wow, one of the base components. So this is your order as well coming in. Yep. You've got the rolls coming in. And this gets mixed into yeah, the it, machine. It goes into this mixer here. And we'll kind of start over here. So this is called a drum unloader. It's uh, basically a fancy pump that's heated and takes the adhesive out of the drums. And what it's doing, it's churning a gear pump and pushing the adhesive up through this heated hose. And then from there, it goes down into the mixer. So and it's pushing the top down. Yep which is separating it or shoving it into the pipe? Shoving it into the it. pipe, yep. And, and Is that better than just sucking it up? The adhesive's too thick to suck with the pump, so it oh. has to push down on the top, and it also pulls it uh, with the pump as well. Wow. But it's a heated thinned platen, so each fin is individually heated, so it preheats the adhesive or the base component as it's pushing down into the top of the drum. And that makes it more viscous. Or yeah, it thins it down so that the pump can push it through that hose and get it into the mixer. Unbelievable. Yeah. So this is the drum that you just showed us. Yep. And these, you know, how long does it take to push it all the way through? About an hour. An hour. And then so someone is notified and they come and switch it out and do another. Exactly. One. There, there's an alarm that goes off when the drum's empty, and then they know to come in and swap out the drum. Wow. And uh, and it it might stop before it's empty because it needs a different component. So it'll automatically stop and sound an alarm to notify whoever's running the mixer to come change out the drum with the next component. And then it uses all those different components, we'll add in pigment, tackifier, all sorts of stuff to make the finished adhesive that then we coat. Cool, okay, yeah. so push down, it's pumped up. Pushes through there. Pushes into this thing. Yep. So this is the actual mixer. It mixes, uh, can hold the 120 gallons. So we mix two drums at a time. So you can see in there, so we're mixing the yellowish clear adhesive that we use for the 260 quick grip tape. Wow. And every day we'll mix two batches and each batch is two drums. So we uh, will mix four drums of adhesive every day. And how do you know what, because you talked about in the formulas, hey, we're making this type of tape today, for example. Yeah. Um, what does that depend on? Is it like Monday and Wednesday we're doing this, or is it more based on demand from distributors? Or It's more based on demand, uh, but we try to run clear adhesive for a couple weeks and then white adhesive for a month, uh, because we have to purge the mixer and purge the coater when we switch from clear to white. Ah, so you really don't want to switch or minimal as possible. Yeah, exactly. So so we try to schedule it out uh, way in advance so we're not switching last minute. But um, So wait, you'd have to like clean out everything in here. Yeah, but we do it with the purging adhesive. Uh, so we fill it up with another thicker adhesive that uh, takes everything on the walls of the mixer sticks to that, pulls it in, and then we just pretty much purge that and use it. Got it. Yeah. And how long does it start spinning in here until it's, it until it's ready? It's in here for three hours. Three hours. Yep. That's not super long. No, yeah. no. And that's yeah. why we can do two in a day easily. Yeah. Got it. But yeah, so it's, right now it's adding in one component into the mixer. And then when it's done, it's a pretty cool process. It pulls a vacuum 
because if, if we just added in components of adhesive into the mixer, there would be bubbles and it would be kind of a foamy adhesive. And if we tried to coat that bubble adhesive, we get a tape with a bunch of little dots in it from each air bubble. So when this is done, it automatically starts pulling a vacuum and uh, it's a pretty cool process. All the adhesive in there inflates like a marshmallow as it's pulling a vacuum because there's less air pressure above the adhesive and all those little air bubbles that were in there now have a much greater air pressure than what's above it. So they all expand. So a, a little bubble that was the size of a pinhead now becomes the size of a baseball and it expands, goes to the top and then it releases the vacuum, it all falls down, and it pulls that and cycles it about 20 times wow. to get all the bubbles out. Interesting. Yeah. And this device looks newer than the other one, unless it was just all ordered separately. Is this Was this like a bigger drum or? Yeah, yeah, this is uh, one that we had made for us and it's stainless, so it stays uh, looking nice. I can't imagine you've had this cool machine forever. like. Was this how it's always been, or was this done differently or more manual before? Looking at like 10 years. Oh, yeah. Yeah, well, yeah, it's, yeah. It's been, you know, 10 years ago when, when we brought in this equipment. And prior to that, we were we were contracting the coating out and just in the, the converting part. So okay. um, we work hard at, at keeping everything clean. With adhesive, it can get messy in a hurry. And, and yeah. if you stay on top of it, it stays it stays nice like like this. It looks, looks pretty much brand new, you know, which is cool. Right. So. But it seals up tight, you know, it's airtight, so we get a good vacuum when, when the vacuum cycle hits. How do you think about, as a business, of uh, using partners versus making it in-house, right? Because you're already starting to see, I mean, maybe you could bring in the roller, maybe you could bring in this, but you chose this one for, and not the others. You, you know, it, you mean as far as like this brand? Or or just or like this, this machinery just versus before you, know, you were using yeah, that partner. It, with this, it allows us ultimate control. You know, we, we weren't able to get the exact characteristics that we wanted, you know, and, and so with this, we can we can have infinite levels of tack. We can have infinite levels of, of, of aggressiveness. Um, and so we can control it however we want. And, and screen printing is a pretty fickle thing. You know, it, it needs to, to work for most everybody and you're trying to stick to a screen, to emulsion really, and and everybody's emulsion's a little different. Everybody's screens are a little different. And so to come up with a product that, that universally works takes takes a while to get that dialed in. And so we're able to, to modify that. And if, and if things change over time, if different emulsions become more popular, we can we can adjust that if we need to or come up with a new product if we need to. But um, but it just gives us control over it. And that's, that's a good thing. Got it. Yeah. Cool. Yeah. All right, so but, what's next? I see yeah. this like, I don't know if this is yeah. a torture device or <laughs> some mad science lab or? <laughs> so when the batch is done, this vat of 110 gallons of adhesive is on tracks and the whole vat, you can see the tracks here, wheels on over to this ram press. So when the batch is done, the adhesive is really still too thick to just pump right out. So we have to push it out. So with this ram press, it'll take the vat that's uh, inside of here locked in place, raises it up, and we'll lift it up high enough where we can take an empty drum and put the empty drum under it. And then when we're ready to push the adhesive out, this top flatten pushes down and forces the adhesive out of the vat and into the drums. Wow. Oh, so and so this cardboard is just here to protect it so it doesn't drip on exactly. there. Exactly. Yeah. It. Okay. Yeah. It's not the ultimate like fly trap. Yeah. Yeah. For real. <laughs> and so this, so that that gets wheeled over. I see there's tracks on the ground, yep. which is actually kind of neat. So it's kind of foolproof to wheel it over. Exactly. Goes yep. under here. This starts to push down. Yep, then and we raise it up above an empty drum and it'll fill a drum in 20 seconds. So in lieu of pumping it out, we just push it out of the back. Wow. 
And then once we have the adhesive in the drums, we load them into this drum unloader. It's another very similar to what was used in the mixer, a pump that takes the adhesive out of the drums, heats it, and then forces it through this heated hose. So similarly kind of replicating the first step. Yeah, exactly. But this new compound. Yep. This is such a fascinating thing, by the way, is just like, you know, this one sucks it out. This one, this pushes, one pushes it, it out, out. Yeah. right? It's just very unique yeah. of way of, Yeah. I feel like a dumb union, like, you know, just like, just scoop it out or, yeah. you know, <laughs> you or could. pour it yeah, out. Yeah, you could, but... yeah, pour it. Um, this is a safer way. Uh, some people do pour adhesives, but as you can imagine, it's 300 degrees and it sticks to you. So if, if you're pouring it and you get a ton of adhesive on your arm, I mean, bad. that would be a, be a major be issue. Very yeah. bad. That'd be very yeah. bad. So, so this keeps it safe, all enclosed. Yeah. Got it. Yeah. Cool. All right. And then this is the coating line. So you'll see uh, this stripe tape. Uh, these are light barriers. And if you cross, cross these lasers here, it'll emergency stop the machine. Got it. Uh, so as, as it's running, uh, you'll want to kind of not cross those. Otherwise, it'll slam the machine and stop. Smart. So, um, so it takes the adhesive, pushes it through this heated hose, and that hose runs along here, and then this is kind of where everything happens. So right now, we are coating that same clear quick rip adhesive on the film. Uh -huh. The film stop unwinds here, so this is just a, an uncoated film. It's specially treated so the adhesive sticks to one side of the film and not the other. So it unwinds here. So this is taking the film off of a roll. Yep. And I'm assuming you bought the roll like pre-wrapped and everything. Exactly. It's unwinding it. Yep. And this machine is laying down just a crazy thin coat yeah. of the adhesive. Exactly. And is so, it... Yeah, th this is a plastic extrusion dot uh -huh. and it's made specifically for adhesive coating. And in here, there's a hundred different heating elements and each one's individually temperature controlled. And it's extruding the adhesive really as a film on top of the film stock that we're coating. And as we're coating it, so we can see if there's a high spot or a low spot in the adhesive, this is a, um, a gauge scanner that looks at just the adhesive and ignores whatever film is behind it. And it's displaying on this graph our adhesive coat weight. So you can see it's a little high there, a little low there, but- Wow. Um, Wait, so this is the laser yeah. that's outputting, outputting the variance the of the there. high, how, how high or low the adhesive yeah. is on the-, on the yep. so, wow. so that way, if there's a low spot, uh, we can use the bolts and different adjustments to increase that low spot to even it out. And so does someone have to be watching this constantly then or? Yeah. Yeah, this, this machine takes constant attention. If the film breaks, we have to stop it quickly. Uh, if the film were to break and wrap around this roller, it would trash this roller. And- uh, Does that happen? It's happened once. And it, it was a project to swap out. The roller has to be made in the UK, sent to France to be ground down, and then shipped back here. Oh my God. Because there's only God. one place in France that can grind the roller at a tight enough tolerance. To, you, know, you know, like when you got a tape, roller and you can't get the duct tape off the edge yeah this is like the ultra expensive complex engineering version yeah, exactly. of that problem yeah wow and and we've got an extra one ready to go so uh -huh. if something did happen the film broke and we didn't stop the machine quick enough uh we've got a new roller to load in but it's it's not something we want to do is that why you bought the second is because the first time it happened yeah exactly no we had the second one ready to go uh, because to order it in the UK, it takes you know a month for them to make it. Then to have it ground in France takes another month. Then put on a boat, there's another couple months. So we have an extra roller ready to go at all times, just in case. Otherwise, we'd have months of downtime. Got it. This is incredible. The laser technology is what I find yeah. fascinating for the yeah. QA and to make sure everything's done correctly. It's pretty cool. It, it stores all the data. And um, one thing that you can kind of see, there's these yellow lines above and below. If it crosses into the yellow line, uh, the bars turn yellow, 
and that means that we need to make an adjustment. It's still within spec, uh, it's still a really tight tolerance, but it signals our guys to, hey, we need to address this. If it crosses into the red above or below, then that means that it's out of spec and we throw out that material. Wow. It doesn't really happen very often, but uh, but it, it still tells us that something's out of spec as we're making it. So cool. Is this the grandmaster yep. of the laser? Uh... <laughs> yeah, yep. this is Bob. Yep. Yep. Thanks, Bob. We appreciate you yeah. watching the laser. <laughs> it makes it look easy. Yeah. That's oh, good. Yeah. And uh, this this adhesive is cured by UV light. Uh -huh. Some of the only people in the US that have a UV coater like this. So the, the main difference typically a tape is either a solvent-based adhesive or a water-based adhesive. And it goes through a dryer to cure that adhesive and make it solid. It. But the downside to those is when you expose that adhesive to a liquid or a solvent, it will re-liquify and just go back to its liquid state. So with screen printing, there can be solvents and water and um, all sorts of stuff that can be thrown at that adhesive. So other tapes don't work very well because when that adhesive comes in contact with an ink or a chemical, it'll break down and leave residue. Where this adhesive is cured by UV light, and that's kind of... Um, but one thing that allows it to work really well. So no matter what you throw at it, it's always cured and will never go back down to a liquid state. Wow. And the, the UV lamps are mounted around this chilled roller here. It gets up over- those boxes or- yeah, Oh yeah, I see. Yeah, there are okay. long uh, lamps that slide into that cartridge. And the whole thing is water cooled. Those lamps get up over 1200 degrees. Holy so cow. without water cooling, it would melt that whole structure. So there must be significant maintenance then and making sure, you know, testing the hoses, the water, yeah, the... Exactly, and it's, the chillers are all integrated into the coder. So if one chiller shuts down, it just stops the coder. So it, it was built really well so that if one thing goes wrong, it just doesn't allow it to turn on. Is this machine newer too, in terms of technology? Yeah, we got or... it all pretty much at the same time, about 10 years ago. Got it. Yeah. Wow, so there was a big upgrade 10 years ago. Yeah, oh, yeah. it was a lot going on, yeah. yeah. We, you know, we're in the process of getting the slitter and talking to the slitter manufacturer. And, you know, their whole world is just that machine. And we're telling them, oh yeah, we're also gonna start coding at the same time. And we're also gonna start mixing at the same time. And they're like, you sure you're gonna take all that on at once? Wow. And yeah, it was- Yeah, there's not many people that that do the compound. Uh, yeah. There's not yeah. many people that do the compounding, the coating, yeah. the slitting, the finishing. We're, we're pretty unusual from to be able to take it for the entire process. There aren't many um, companies that do that. As a business, what about it 10 years ago then was investment time? The what? I'm sorry? What about it was investment time? Like what, what, what about that period was saying, all right, let, let's go buy this crazy laser you thing know, and that thing yeah. and... It, it was really Andrew's involvement in the company. Andrew's been been working, we've been working together since Andrew was in high school, but but once he graduated from college from Purdue, you know, his vision was to was to take it another step and let's invest in the equipment. Fresh let's bring all this in-house, like, give us more diversity. And so I'm I'm like, let's do it. Let's do it. So it's a significant investment, but we have no regrets. It's been it, it's been good. Okay, so there's some interesting family dynamics in other businesses, yeah. a lot of yeah. shops, obviously. Um, sounds like you were pretty on board. I wonder from your perspective, were you, was your dad on board early on? Did it take convincing? I mean, yeah, I'm assuming- He was on board at the same time as me. I mean, it took both of us some convincing to do it. I mean, it was a big move to like, get all the equipment and everything and bring it all in house. Yeah. Uh, but I mean, we, we see eye to eye on really all that stuff and, and did on that decision too. And so I don't it, think it really it's helped. bad. It's just like, you know, person starts the business. They've been doing it this way for 10, 20 years. Yeah. This is how we do it. And, uh, you know, younger person comes in. It's like, I don't, you know, what are you talking about? And this is how yeah. we... it, it takes. I think it takes total trust. I, I totally trust what Andrew does and his yeah. decisions. You know, he's proven to make good choices and, and investments have been been fruitful. So, um, you know, I've seen other people with 
with having challenges with the, the founder owners stepping out and the next generation stepping in. And, and, and I've worked hard to try and step back, let Andrew do his thing. And, uh, uh, and, he, and he's ran that. with it. Because that's that is hard. It is. Um, it is, is it just hard. like being very proactive about it? Or how do you think about it? You know, it, it seems natural. To yeah, me. yeah, yeah, it seems natural. I'm, you know, I'm happy kind of stepping out and, and doing other stuff. And, uh, you know, I come in and help whenever I can, but, but try not to meddle, you know, try got not to, to get involved in things that Andrew's already got covered. Okay. Um, and so it, cool. I think it just involves trust, Yeah. you know, and, and there's a million ways to accomplish whatever task. And, and as long as the end was the end goals, the same, how you get there, it doesn't really matter. Yeah. You know, so, um, so, so no, we're, we're fortunate that, that we don't have conflict. That'd be, yeah. that'd be horrible yeah. if you did. Yeah. 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 But, cool. Uh, All right. Yeah. yeah. So I'll show you, uh, so this is the finish roll winding up. So each roll is about 14,000 feet when it's done. Wow. It weighs about 2,000 pounds. Is this almost done, does it look like, or no? Yeah, it's almost done. Okay. Yeah. And it's all, oh yeah, it's done right now. Oh, yeah. Yep. All right, so now what? what, what? Is it going to so, go over on the side? So Bob is now going to load in a new drum of adhesive. And uh, after that, unload this roll, load on a new core, and fire it back up again. So you have to manually like unclip this, roll it out of the way, or? Yeah, so it, uh, I can show you. So he'll take oh, this, yeah, yeah. We'll cut it free. And then right now, uh, we'll take this piece of tape and we'll do QC testing right away. So we QC test every roll right when it's done before we coat the next roll. Uh, we've never had any significant issue or anything, but that way if something was wrong, we'll know it right away before we start making more rolls just like it. There'd be nothing worse than running several days with the bad material. So we, we QC test it right away. Could you make the world's largest roll of tape? We could. Yeah. Well, Do you know if that, is that a Guinness yeah, World Record? Yeah, yeah. We've got restrictions. Yeah. I would be big, curious, the Guinness yeah. World Record book, it can't be yeah. that big, but. Uh, yeah, we can make a big one. Yeah. <laughs> All right. So this machine over here takes, oh, sorry, takes those jumbo rolls. So when the rolls are, are we good? yeah. Right. <clears throat> so when the rolls are done on the coder, we load them onto the slitter, and uh, this is a jumbo roll of the white stock. So that's used for our split tape and our full adhesive tape. So this comes off of the machine we just saw. Yep. Rolls into here. Loads onto here, <laughs> and uh, right now Scott running the slitter is taking the roll that was run weeks ago. So uh, like right now we're coating the clear stock, kind of storing that, and then Scott's pulling from the white stock right now. And this is a sound barrier. As you open this up, it gets pretty loud. Wow. What is, that's the noise of it coming off the adhesive. Exactly. So you know how loud it is unwinding like a three inch wide roll of tape? Right. This is a five foot wide roll of tape unwinding really fast <laughs> too. So it, when it's running at full speed, it sounds like a train. So right. this is a sound barrier that closes around that roll as it's unwinding so that it's not just crazy loud and shakes the whole thing. Wow. So it's, it's a pretty cool, it, it actually works really well. And it's there. cutting too? It is. Where is it cutting? Oh, on this side. Yep. So you can see in that yellow bar, we load in different blades. And right now the blades are spaced three inches apart because Scott's running three inch wide full adhesive tape. And that can be customized or you're moving the blades however you exactly. want. Exactly, yep. So we can run two inch and four inch, six inch, 15 inch. Any width, we just space out the blades to whatever width we need to cover. Unbelievable. And the scrap is winding up on the sides. We uh, scrap off that outside edge of tape, and it's that's what's winding up. How does top. it stay so aligned and perfect? Like, does it ever shift over, or is it it's always like that? The coder has laser edge guides, so it winds up perfectly straight rolls. And that gives the slitter perfectly straight rolls every time. 
Uh, there are also electronic ways to move the whole web left and right on the slitter, but because the rolls are coming off the coder perfect every time, uh, they're in registration and lined up just right uh, every roll. So I bet like this machine, the precision has to be perfect in terms of oh, yeah. the roll coming down and off yeah. and onto the... Totally. Yeah. Wow. Yeah, I'll show you on this side. Yeah. This, this is the cool part to see. So it's winding up the rolls over here. It automatically applied a paper tab across the whole width. It can apply it at just the right time so that when it cuts the tape, it's got a paper tab at the end. Smart. You just save human beings so much frustration. <laughs> exactly. Just to start that first little piece of tape off the roll, that little piece of paper helps. So they roll, you get maybe, what, 20 rolls at a time here? Yeah, you got it. 20 three-inch wide rolls out of the web. And, uh, and Scott, I'll let you uh, take the shafts and reload them. Yep. Yeah. So it pulls the shaft through, leaving the rolls behind, and then reloads pores at just the right spot on the shaft. Oh, wow. And then it loads more of uh, yep. the uh, more cores in, in the exact right spot. Now, is this machine specifically built for this purpose? It is. Yeah. It. Yeah. This machine is meant to slit hand sized rolls of tape. Crazy. Even just, I mean, you know, being in the industry for a while, the the other niches and other areas of like, oh, wow, there's a company making a machine specifically to cut, unload, and put, you know, cores of tape onto rolls again. Exactly. That's they, what they're they do a on. good job at it. Yeah. Right, right. Yeah, that's what they do. What's I the, know. There must be a trade show for... There is. Yeah, it's okay. like the ICE show okay. it's for International Converting Equipment, I think is the name for what it stands for. But yeah, cool. this... Yeah. And these are going on here. He's loading them on. Yep, onto a conveyor belt. All the up, way into this guy. So what, so now what, where do we go from yeah. here? So on the slitter, we can also cut rolls this long and these we call them machine length rolls. And that's because the guys take these rolls and load them onto their machines. So for products like the quick rip tape or the split tape where there's that deadened adhesive area, we take it to the next step on these presses and put in that dead and adhesive area. If it's like full adhesive tape and it's just straight tape with nothing fancy on it, uh, then it just comes right off the slitter like what Scott's doing today. But on these finishing presses, um, here I'll show you closer up. So Don here is making our quick rip tape. Putting the paper tab on the end of the roll. And so every roll has to be done manually. Yeah. If it's wow. not coming off the slitter, yeah, every roll is individually tabbed. And here so, we can get up close to this machine. I'll show you. So this is adding the non-adhesive or the less adhesive side. Exactly. Yeah. So we're we're taking this adhesive deadener and we're applying it to the adhesive side of the tape to deaden the adhesive in that area. Wow. So it's going through, this machine's like almost painting that on and that makes it less sticky. Yep, exactly. So, so the blue part goes against the screen frames and the white part goes against the mesh. And the whole purpose for all this is tape tends to stick more to the metal frame. Holy oh, cow. Uh, so you literally have to make the tape, then put the other side on, yep. and do roll by roll. One roll at a time. Or two rolls at a time in this case. Wow. Crazy.
so cool. And then when does he know to stop? Is there like a timer? Or? Yeah, there's a, a counter on there. So after it hits 60 yards, it automatically stops and rotates. Got it. And this is the secret sauce. Of, this is the secret sauce of the adhesive deadener. Yep. yep. So that deadens the adhesive, so it makes it not sticky in that area. Got it. Yeah, so when the guys are done with the rolls, they drop them onto these roller conveyors. And then from there, it's a little washout booth. Yep, <laughs> exactly, yeah. It's a mini washout yep. booth. Yeah. Yep. yep. <laughs> so all the rolls make their way around to this one central location. And they're all separated by each lane. So we've got three presses over there, the slitter there. So we've got four separate lanes separating out the tape. What I find so interesting is also just the use of a conveyor belt, you know, versus, all right, we'll put them in the box, we'll wheel all the boxes to the next station, then yeah. wheel those boxes to the next station. Um, but obviously you don't need that person in to do this. And they can yeah. focus on other stuff. Yeah, exactly. Yep. So it, uh, this whole system has kind of sped up our production by 30%. Wow. So it's allowed us to put out the conveyors. More tape. The conveyors and the robots, Got everything it. together. Uh, because before that, the guys would take the rolls and pack every roll by hand. So they would put a separator ring down, put another roll on top of that, and then put a bag around that sleeve of rolls, tape up a box, put that in the box. So now, instead of that whole process of packing it, they can just drop the rolls on the conveyor and it takes it down here. Okay. Yeah. This is the... Uh, this is Robbie. This is the Elon Musk area of yep. the factory. <laughs> yeah. So as the rolls reach six rolls back, then it tells this guy that there's enough for a six pack in that lane. So like right now, it's not gonna start pulling from this lane because this sensor isn't triggered. Wow, and it looks like you built this. Yeah. So you put the sensor here, that's to know that there's six here. Yep. That tells the robot it's ready to be to grab. Exactly, yep. Okay. So it'll alternate through the lane. So next, uh, once it clears at the other end, it doesn't wanna create a log jam. But once it clears over there, it'll start pulling from there, pulling from there, pulling from there. <laughs> And you said this on the podcast, but you buy the robots, but you have to make them do these movements. Yeah. Like, it looks like they're just working, but obviously this is from how long of, you know, coding and telling it to grab here, not here. What You know, oh, you dropped it. Now yeah. what? I mean, it took maybe a month of solid programming to get the base of everything put together, but then it took pretty much a year of getting all the bugs worked out. Because if you have a roll that's, um, you know, if Scott is running four inch wide tape, it can grab the four inch a little bit differently than the two inch wide rolls. Uh, so it, getting all those little bugs worked out took a lot of time because when you're solving one problem, a lot of times you create a whole nother problem mm -hmm. and then you have to work out that bug. And it, it took a good year to get it all kind of sorted out, but it, it runs really well now and we're happy with it. So we're, we're no longer like tweaking things, so we're just letting it run. This robot company needs to come do a, a testimonial with you guys. Yeah, yeah. yeah. This is really cool. <laughs> All right, so it grabs six. Yep. Looks like, is this the divider sheet? Yeah, so uh, this is the shrink film that forms the uh, the bag that shrunk around the six pack. Okay. Got it. So it's basically just folded down the middle. So this one basically just puts them in a bag and seals the bag. Robbie's a hard worker. <laughs> Thanks, Robbie. He's gotten employee of the month a few times. <laughs> yeah, you need that like yeah. 20 years of service on the wall. Robbie, yeah. <laughs> so you heat seal them into here. Yep. They come out. These arms have, looks like suction on it. Exactly. Yeah, they're suction cups and it's pretty cool. It uses compressed air, sends it through those Venturi vacuum generators and creates suction from just the compressed air. I just saw the little tilt. Yeah. I yeah, mean, it seems technique. like one of the, yeah. and oh was... my gosh, and it's going to close the box? <laughs> wow. 
and that little tilt was a one little bug to work out. You know, it used to put him straight down into the box, but then if the flap is folded in a little funny, right. it would catch that flap on its way down. So by kind of tilting it in, it rotates it into the box. So if the flaps are folded a little in a goofy way, it still gets in there. Wow. Oh, his name's Casey because he works with the cases. <laughs> Casey's coming in. Yeah. So he's getting this box. So how it works is this is lane three. At the beginning of the day, uh, Brandon is running on lane three, loads his boxes in. Brandon's a human or a Brandon's robot? a human. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. And uh, like right now, lane three is stacked high enough to fill a case. Wait, why did they move this box over there? It can only grab the boxes in the right way from a certain angle, and it has to be close enough to hit that certain angle. So you shift it first. Yep. And then Picks it's up the box in it. just the right way. Oh Suctions my. onto the box to yeah. open it up. This folds the two minor flaps on the bottom. And then this one heard from that one that, hey, the box for lane three is ready to go. So it starts grabbing six packs from lane the three. The arm bend. What's that? That arm bend to get it right. Yep. I just, that's the... yep. It's pretty cool. They talk to each other. So um, when this one stacks high enough to fill a case, like right now, that's high enough to fill a case. Yeah. So it just told this arm, after you're done with this one, grab a box for lane one. So this one knows now to get ready to, to get a box for lane one when this one's complete. Holy cow. And then is and then it's gonna tape it and push it over on this side. Yep. And these can run a lot faster, but we have them kind of at the speed to keep up with our production. Uh -huh. There's no need to put unnecessary wear on the points with the arms. I mean, they, they can fall around. Yeah, but... you don't want to give them off riders. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> <laughs> All right, here we go. Just close the top and bottom, then those pneumatic arms. A conveyor belt is turned on. The arm pushes it. Tape over the top. And then this guy's here. name is Bud. This is Spud? Bud. Bud. Yep. All right, Bud's coming in. And he's going to put it on pallet number three because this box. That's got to have some good suction, too. It does, yeah. And it knows the pattern yes. on the pallet. And that's one thing that took a long time. Um, Every box not only has to have a location where it goes, but then a path to get there without hitting potentially other boxes that could be stacked up like on pallet two. Wow. So this whole thing is on a lift, so it can lift up and over another pallet that might be next to it. And Bud's going back down to rest yep, he's mode. getting ready. And right now it's packing up lane one. And how did it open the bottom of the box like that? Because it sounds like it like almost like shakes it out or something. I'll show you on the next one. It uh, an, another bug that we worked out. It used to use gravity to kind of um, hold the box like this, and then it would fold it. But if the boxes have a little bit of glue in there from where they glue the seams, it'll hold the box together. Uh -huh. So we put suction cups uh, right down here that grip onto the other side of the box. To Where, on the off. left side? Uh, it's uh, right here, those guys. Oh, yep. wow. So uh, right over there. <laughs> and so it sucks into the side to use it to angle it to pull it out. Exactly. Got yep. it. OK, that's that noise that Yeah, the that snapping hear. sound. Yeah. Holy cow. And so do you think you could apply this to more aspects of the business, or is this like as optimized as we can with the robot arms? Well, I think we're pretty optimized with the packaging. We've thought about doing like an automatic labeling system mm -hmm. so the guys don't have to label up their boxes at the beginning of each day. But um, we, we feel like we just got this going. So got it's it. like, why rock the boat? So we'll just kind of run with it for a while. 
Wow. And then somebody, I'm assuming, once it hits some certain height, has to physically yeah, wrap it, move it or out of the way. move it yeah. out of the way. Exactly. We'll load in a new pallet. And it separates all the products. So, like, this came from lane one, so it's putting it on pallet number one. And there's pallet two, three, and four. I, I think the part that I love most about this is that you've shown that this is accessible to, um, you know, small, mid-sized yeah. businesses. This isn't like, I mean, you see this on TV, making cars and, and widgets and whatever else, but you guys have done it, um, which is incredible. Yeah. And I, I just love to see something like this is how does this apply to screen printing shops too, whether opening boxes, you know, um, in a, in a beautiful world, counting shirts, yeah. uh, you know, putting them in boxes and folding, all these kinds of crazy ideas that this, this really gets your mind thinking. Yeah, it, yeah, they can do a lot. What was this robot company called again? Universal Robots. Universal Robots, yeah. very cool. Sweet, so then it just yeah. comes in here yeah. and gets warehoused? Yeah, and uh, that's it for the most part. We've got another press here, yeah. He, he packs his rolls by hand. It's, uh, right. he, after doing all of this, uh, we still kind of fell behind on our lead times and needed some more production. Got it. So Paul runs that for us and uh, packs certain products back here. Very cool. Yeah. All right, awesome. Um, if anybody's in town, are they able to swing by? Sure. Can, can yeah. they see? Just reach out to me. Okay, yeah. cool. And uh, is Andrew at PMI Tape? I can't remember the Yeah, email. Andrew at PMI Tape. And, and Mark at PMI Tape.com. Yeah. All right, awesome. This is Andrew and Mark. We're at PMI Tape. If you're in Indy, Indianapolis, Indiana, you've got to see this. This is unbelievable. This is where everything's going. It's really cool to be here. And thank you guys for, for taking the time to, to uh, show me and Bruce, you know, be open for to coming down here to look at it. Yeah. Absolutely. Thank you for coming yeah. in. Okay. Absolutely. Yeah. All right, guys, we'll see you on the next shop tour. Hopefully you enjoy this one. Yeah. Bye. <laughs>